Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Back in video 77, I talked about different uh, turnout options for your model railroad. And one thing I explained was the difference between power routing turnouts and all live turnouts. One of the problems with the older power routing turnouts, like this Shinohara here, is that they're not DCC friendly. So what I want to do today is show you how to convert a turnout like this old Shinohara power routing version to DCC friendly configuration. So stick around for the video. One thing I would really appreciate is if you would take a moment to click on the little red uh, subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of your screen and when the little bell comes up, click on it and select all. And that way you'll be notified by YouTube every time I post a new video. Thanks a lot now. Okay, so what I want to do here is focus down onto the workbench where I've got my tools set up and we'll go ahead and begin the uh, six step process of converting this turnout to DCC friendly configuration. Now, this is a Shinohara turnout and, you know, it was uh, made by Shinohara in Japan for Walther's for many years and I don't know Walther's probably sold tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of them So you can usually find these for sale at um, uh, Train shows and the like as well as on eBay and other online uh, Forums, so if you come up with something like this, I'll show you how to convert it Also, there are a lot of other types of turnouts that are, are similar in many ways to the Shinohara. So the things that I'm going to show you how to do today, you can apply to other types of turnouts that have the same kinds of problems. So don't turn the video off just because you don't have a Shinohara. If you have a power routing turnout that is not DCC friendly, a lot of the things that I'm going to show you today will be useful to you. So let's go ahead. I'm going to focus down onto the workbench and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, the first step in this process that I want to start with is uh, isolating the frog because, you know, that's one of the uh, primary th uh, considerations here is to be able to set this frog up so that you can power it uh, off of a tortoise switch machine or some other device that's going to allow you to power route just the frog itself. Now the way I do that is I take a Dremel tool, but you could just as easily use a razor saw to cut across the rails here and create gaps that are going to isolate the frog itself from the uh, frog rails and the closure rails. So I'm going to turn on my Dremel tool. This is going to be loud, so hang in there while I cut this. So that's the first cut down through there. So let's do the other side. Okay, that's all there uh, with the Dremel tool, so I'm going to put that aside. Okay, so you can see what I've done here is I've cut through both rails here and here, isolating the frog itself. And when you get ready to install this turnout, you can um, solder a feeder here or on this side, depending. I usually put the uh, feeder on the side opposite uh, or and away from the, rail, the aisle itself so that it's not as visible. But at any rate, once you get this uh, cut, then this frog is isolated and you can power it uh, directly from a frog juicer or from a tortoise switch machine or various other devices. So it's fairly straightforward to do this. One thing that you can also do to guarantee that your rails are not going to shift and close on you is put a little styrene spacer in here, glue it in with super glue, paint it and or uh, trim it with your uh, uh, with your exacto knife and then paint it and you know it'll blend in completely with the rest of the rail and you'll never know it's there. Okay, let's move on to step two in this process. The second thing I want to do here is take a look at the uh, assembly for the point rails. And you can see that basically there's a metal throw bar here and here that's connecting both of the point rails. And that's, the, that's one of the big problems because that way uh, it picks up power when it's pressed against the stock rails, either side like that or like that. And because of that, because of this metal connecting rod here and here, a bar, uh, the two uh, point rails are always the same polarity. And when this is closed against that stock rail, if a wheel drops down into here, if it derails going through, then you'll get a dead short at this point. 
So what we need to do is isolate the two point rails. And in order to do that, I have to get these out of this assembly. So what I'm going to do is take a, uh, a drill bit uh, and I'm going to drill right down through the middle of the rivet here uh, in each one of these and that's going to pop them out. So again, more noise. Okay, that's the first one. So you can see that lifts right out now and we can discard that uh, throw bar. Uh, okay, so we have this uh, point rail assembly here and as you can see it's soldered uh, here on the back side and what I'm going to do is take my soldering iron and just disconnect those two uh, those two solder joints. So let's see here if I can get these out without burning myself. There we go. And there, so that's done. And now there and there. Okay, so that part is taken care of now. So let's move on to the next step. Now, if you look real close here between the, uh, the two closure rails, there's another metal strip embedded in the plastic ties. Okay, now we've got to get that out of there or at least remove part of it because it's going to make a connection between these two rails and short us out when we convert it to DCC friendly. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and get that uh, ready to come out. Okay, so what I'm going to do to get this out of the way is I've got my Dremel tool back out and I'm going to cut through the uh, metal bar right here and right here on each side and then we'll just pull it out of place. Okay, so you can see that's going to isolate each side here. Okay, now I'm going to take my uh, blade here and clean that up a little bit. There. Okay, now the next step will be inserting rail joiners here and here that the um, point rails will be slipped into. So let me get that ready. Okay, what I want to do next is I need to get these two metal strips out from underneath the ends of these uh, rails in order to make room for rail joiners. So I'm just going to take the uh, chisel blade, slide it up underneath those and bend them up so that I can get them out with my hemostat. There and there. Now, that's going to allow me to slide hopefully my little rail joiners up in there. So I'm just putting these on the end of a hemostat and let's see if we can't slide them into place. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've got my little uh, my point rail in my hemostat and I'm going to uh, slide it up into the rail joiner. Okay, just like that. And let's get the other one and get it inserted as well. Okay, now that needs to be tightened up some. So all you have to do is just squeeze the rail joiner a little bit and that's going to leave it a nice tight joint, but still enough so that this can flex. You want to be able to move those little uh, those rails. Now in order to replace the tie, we have to come up with something that we can solder to uh, to make the connection uh, uh, between the point rails and the throw bar itself. So what I'm going to be using here is a uh, PC board tie these uh, ones I have are from Clover House, and it represents a 9-inch wide uh, tie here. And uh, you can see it's a piece of uh, phenolic uh, compound uh, board of some kind. And on both sides, it's got copper cladding. And what I've done here is I just cut off a strip about a quarter inch wide of the copper. And then when we get ready to do the soldering, we'll be able to solder the 
pulley rails to each side of it and then we'll have this section in the center that uh, has no copper so it will insulate the two uh, point rails from each other. And then I'm going to drill a hole right here in a minute uh, for the uh, throw rod that's going to come up from the tortoise switch machine that will allow me to uh, throw the points. So let me go ahead and we'll uh, take a look at, uh, look at that and uh, I'll get out my uh, drill and we'll drill a hole here for that, uh, for that uh, throw rod. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, drill the hole here. Okay, so there you go. We've got a hole there that the, uh, the throw rod can come up from the tortoise and throw the points one way or the other. Okay, so all we have to do is slide this in here and hold it while I set it back down on the workbench and then get it centered up and we'll go ahead and go through the process of soldering the point rails to that copper cladding. So what I'm going to be using is this Kester solder. It is a 62% tin, 36% lead, and 2% silver solder. Okay, so that silver is going to make it a little bit harder than your normal solder would be. So it's going to stand up to repeated uh, movements and closures of the rails. Okay, that's the first side. Now let's pull it out just a little bit, enough uh, there for it to, the uh, wheels to clear. And we're going to go ahead and solder this one. Okay, as you can see now, let this cool a little. I can now throw my points left to right. They're not coming out of their uh, joint here. So we've got a good fit. And I think there's enough clearance on each side there for wheels to easily uh, clear that uh, rail. We don't want, though, to depend on a physical connection between the point rails and the stock rails for power. So that'll be the next step. Let's flip it over and make a connection. Okay, so here on the back side of the turnout, I have made uh, a cut through the plastic webbing underneath of the, that connects the two uh, ties together here, so that I've got bare metal or the bottoms of the rails are exposed between this stock rail and this closure rail and that one and this one. So what I'm going to do is, is make a uh, connection here electrically. I'm just going to solder a, a piece of solid wire between each stock rail and each closure rail. And that is going to give me electrical continuity between the two. So those stock rails uh, will provide the power to each closure rail. So they will always be the same polarity. These two will always be the same, and these two will all be the same. So what I have here is a piece of 20 gauge solid wire, and I'm just going to make a solder connection here and a solder connection here. So that needs to be a little bit shorter for each one of those to work. I'm going to pre tin the spots on the uh, bottoms of the rails where I'm going to make these connections before we get started. Okay, so now we can drop our little uh, pieces of wire in here and do our soldering. Here's that other one. Just going to drop that into place there and hold it. 
Okay, now let's get this other one. Okay, now you can see we've got the electrical connection between the uh, two stock rails and their uh, uh, closure rails. So, that's going to provide the power here. Now, the next step in this process uh, at this point, we've provided power between the stock rails and the closure rails on each side, and that should give us a good connection through the rail joiner here. However, just in case, uh, what I want to do is I want to make a connection between the closure rail and the uh, point rails on each side. So, let's flip it back over, and we're going to run a wire between the solder uh, connections we just made here and a point on the bottom of each one of the point rails. So let me go ahead and I'm going to pull out some very thin wire. This is 30 gauge wire that uh, that I was using was 20. So we'll go ahead and pull out a piece of 30 gauge that can go from here to here without any problems. And I'm using 30 gauge because it has to be on the bottom of the turnout and that way it's not going to interfere with the turnout itself. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this off here. Okay, we've got that one. And let's cut a second one the same length. Okay, that one. And there. Okay, so those are ready. I'm going to go ahead and put a drop of solder on the bottom of the uh, of the point rail that I'm going to uh, make the connection to. And then we'll do another one on this side. There we go. Now those are ready. Let's go ahead. I'm going to pre-tin the ends of these little tiny pieces of wire. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the uh, connection between the uh, the bottom of the point rails anyway and these little pickup wires or jumpers that I'm adding. So I bent them to a little, you know, 90 degree angle there so that they'll fit flush quite easily. And We'll go ahead and put this one in here. Okay, so you might not be able to see those because they're black on dark brown. Okay, so the next step then is to bring those back here and attach them where I made those connections or those jumpers between the stock rail and the uh, closure rails. So what I'm going to do is bend those down and get them ready to make that solder connection there. There we go. Now, let's get the soldering iron and we'll go to work here. Okay, that's a good solid connection. Now let me flip it around and do the other side here. Okay, so that's all there is to it. So now we have our uh, connections between the stock rails, the closure rails, and then between those guys and the point rails themselves. So these uh, little point rails are going to be the same polarity as the adjacent stock rail and as the closure rail that they're attached to. And the same thing on this side. Okay, so no problems there. The final step will come when you get ready to install this turnout because you'll have to make a, a, a feeder connection 
to your uh, uh, frog itself and drop that down and uh, connect it to whatever you're using, a tortoise or you know a frog juicer or whatever to provide power uh, to your frog itself. The connections here are going to be made when you make a uh, solder joint connection between your uh, rails and your running rails here on your turnout. And the same thing at the other end. When you connect the two rails uh, at this end uh, to your running rails on your uh, on your layout, on the rest of your layout, they will provide power to the two stock rails and feed right on through. So that's as simple as it can be. Uh, and like I said, you can use this on any turnout of this type. It doesn't have to be a Shinohara. It can be any kind of um, power routing turnout that is set up like this. And again, refer back to video 77. Uh, where I described uh, turnouts. Also, video 76, I talked about them uh, some there as well. So that should do it uh, as far as converting these to a DCC-friendly version. I hope that gives you an idea of how you can go about converting your uh, older turnouts to DCC-friendly configuration so that you'll be able to use them uh, with your DCC uh, rolling stock and the like uh, without the concerns that come with using the older power routing turnouts uh, on your layout. So that's all for now. Uh, have a good week, and we'll see you the end of the, end of the week on Friday with a new video. Bye now.